first off, I want to give all praises and glory to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His only begotten Son Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit. In Hebrew, it's called the Law Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rahach Kodash. Double honors unto the elders and apostles of GMS who taught me this truth. Salutations to all the brothers out there that's teaching this word in truth and sincerity and peace, blessings and healings on to the elect. Because that's why we do these videos. And uh, today, man, I want to talk about the Passover. As you can see, you know, March 16th Eve to uh, March 23rd Eve, you know, and um, basically I want to talk about the symbolism of it because two years ago, man, when the Passover happened, I think the very next day, the lockdowns happened. You know, it was uh, it was spiritual, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I just want to go into things like that today. Okay, so um, this is Judges 5 and 11. It says... They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawn water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of Yehovah Shemeshah. So we're just rehearsing the righteous acts, you know, by doing this. It says, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel, then shall the people of Yehovah Shemeshah go down to the gates. Okay. And I just want to read a little bit of this before I go into what I want to go into. This is um, Leviticus 23 and 4. It says, these are the feasts of Yahweh Shemeshah, even the holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their seasons. In the fourteenth day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover, Yahweh Shemeshah's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto Yahweh Shemeshah. So, you know, we do on the Feast of Unleavened Bread too, man. You know, um... March 16th to March 23rd, basically take all the leaven out your house. You know what I'm saying? If you can, if you can't, then it just said you just rehearse the righteous acts, but don't you know, you know, anything with yeast in it. You know what I'm saying? Um, for seven days, it says, um, it's the feast of unleavened bread until you have a shot. Seven days, you must eat unleavened bread. So nothing with yeast in it. Okay. It says, in the first day you shall have a holy convocation, you shall do no service work therein. But you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yehovah Shemeshah seven days, and the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no service work therein. You know, this is what we're doing, man. We're having a feast, basically at sundown, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then for them seven days, having unleavened bread, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be spiritual, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said... Two years ago, you know, the very next day, the lockdowns happened. So it was spiritual and everything's just been more spiritual, more spiritual. You know what I'm saying? Prophecies have been just popping off and popping off. You know, especially this year, 2020, we in March. And man, things are going quick. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I want to get some other scriptures too. This is Exodus um, 12. Then Moses called for the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out that door of his house until the morning because, you know, Yahweh Shemeshah was going to tell his son basically come down here and kill all the firstborn. You know, and uh, a lot of people don't know that uh, the, the angel that did that is Yahweh Shai, who people ignorantly call Jesus Christ. You know, he's the one that came down. And killed all the firstborn men. And the Habash and Meshach will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Habash and Meshach will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Okay? And this is what I wanted to talk about because basically, you know, the Habash and Meshach works in mysterious ways. But if you look at it at a spiritual sense, you know what I'm saying? Um, it was symbolism, basically, what was going to happen in the future when Yahweh Shah walked among us, because he was going to be that lamb, you know, and he was going to cover all of the children of Israel with his blood for the remission of sins. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, that blood and that basically killing the lamb, you know, all that was symbolic of to what was going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So, now we're covered by the blood of Yahweh Shai, so we don't have to die, you know, in the second coming, you know what I'm saying? And if you think about it in that sense, this thing is deep, and this thing was planned out, you know what I'm saying? Everything was written beforehand, you know? 
That's why your house has the word. You know what I'm saying? He's the word. It says, um, and he shall observe this thing for the audience to thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when he become to the land which your Habashim shall will give you according as he have promised that he shall keep this service. It shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? Then you shall say, It is the sacrifice of Yahweh Basham Passover. Okay, and who was the, the ultimate sacrifice? Yahweh man. And it's just symbolic that Yahweh is the one that came down and killed all the firstborns and all that, and the blood was on the door, so he didn't uh, kill you. You know what I'm saying? The same thing is going to happen today. You know, if you got that mark of salvation, you know, basically you ain't going to die in the end. Then you shall say it is the sacrifice of Yahweh Basham Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses and the people bowed the head and worship and the children of Israel went away and did as Yahweh Basham had commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. You know, and like I said, it was Yahweh that jumped down and killed all the firstborn, man. You know, but if you read Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18, you read up a little bit. It says, um, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18, verse 13, it says, For whereas thou would not believe anything by reason of the enchantments until the destruction of the firstborn, they acknowledged this people to be the sons of God. For while all these things were in quiet silence, and that night was in the midst of her swift course, thine almighty word, thine almighty word. This is in Wisdom of Solomon, man. Okay. And basically, they took wisdom of Solomon out the scriptures. You know, the so-called white man in the Catholic Church. They took the Apocrypha out the Bible. Thine almighty word leap down from heaven out of thy royal throne. Because Yahweh, shy man, he sits on the right hand of Yahweh, which is, you know, God, man. You know, Yahweh shy sits on the right. He's, he's Yahweh's right hand man. You know, he was the only spirit. That uh, he created. You know what I'm saying? Then Yahweh Shah created everything else. It tells you that in um, John 1. But, you know, that's his son, man. You know, Yahweh Shah, man. Yahweh Shah is the one that died for us, man. That almighty word leaped down from heaven out of thy royal throne as a fierce man of war into the midst of the land of destruction. And brought then unfridged commandment as a sharp sword and standing up filled all things with death and it touched from the heaven. But it stood upon the earth. So Yahweh came down here and was doing all that, man. That almighty word. Because if you go down to John 1. And in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. You know what I'm saying? But if you go down to 14. And the word was made flesh. And, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. So thy word actually came down here and walked among us, man. Okay, you have a shot. Okay. And in the beginning was the word. Because Yahweh created his son. Boom. You know, and the word was with God. And the word was God. Meaning they're not the same, you know, spirits. But they're on the same accord. You know what I'm saying? They agree. They don't agree to disagree. They agree on all things. Okay point blank period you know what i'm saying so i want to get some stuff about uh the blood it says one john one to seven but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of yahweh shahamashiach his son cleanses of us all from all sins so that's what you want man you want your sins to be blotted out because you know, in the end days, a lot of people is going to die for their sins. The people who didn't repent, they're going to have to pay. They're going to have to pay because, um, oh yeah, here it is. This is Romans 6 and 23. It says, for the wages of sin is death. Okay, for the wages of sin is death. So everybody in the end days are going to pay for their sins. But if you're covered by the blood of Yahawashai, then your sins get blotted out. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you want. That's why you want to repent and turn back to your house and Mashiach so you don't have to pay. Because we're all sinners, man. You know, but you want your house house blood to cover you so you don't have to pay for your sins. Okay, for the wages of sin is death. And a lot of people out here are going to pay for their sins. Okay. But the gift of God is eternal life through your house Mashiach, our Lord. That's how, that's how we make it, man. That's why your house 
that's why he's the king of kings. That's why he's to be worshipped, man, because he did a great service, man. He died for all the children of Israel because we broke that first covenant. We broke that first covenant. So, you know, uh, it was Yahweh's every right to uh, basically exterminate us. But Yahweh Shai came down here, walked among us, and uh, was the perfect sacrifice to bring us back in the fold so we can get the second covenant, eternal life new bodies, the raws written in our mind. You know what I'm saying? So that's why your house has to be worshipped. You know what I'm saying? And your house did a great sacrifice for us, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why he the king of kings, the god of gods. I want to get this. This is um Ezekiel 9. I think it's in 9. Um, yeah, so here it goes, man. Like I said, this is the vision of slaughter. So, you know, um, like I read in uh, Exodus 12, basically, you know, back in the day, our people put that blood on the door post so Yahweh Shai wouldn't kill us when we were in Egypt. But it was symbolic for what was going to happen today because the pe for, for the people who repented and turned back to Yahweh Shai, you're going to get hit with a mark. You're going to have the mark of salvation, which is Yahweh Shai's blood. You know, and when all when the end of the world happens, you know, everybody's going to be dying. Everybody's going to be it's going to be chaos out here. You're going to have that uh that mark of salvation, man. And you ain't going to get touched. OK, and then you're going to get saved out of here. OK, and the new Noah's Ark, which is the UFOs, when your house shot comes in his second coming, they call it the rapture. But these people think there's a pre uh, tribulation rap. No, man, we're all going to uh, go through hell. We're all going to go through the end of the world together. But. You know, we got to endure until the end. And if you got that mark of salvation, you'll be good because you'll be protected at all times. But it says, um, Ezekiel 9 and 4, And Yahweh Bashamashah said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that signed that cry for all the abominations that are done in the midst of That mark of salvation is Yahweh Shah's blood, man. Okay? Basically, you know, that uh, blood on the doorposts. Okay, and to the others, he said in my earring, go ye after him through the city and smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children, so and women. But come not near any man whom is the mark and begin in my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. So this is why you want to be covered. Okay, with the blood of Yahweh Shai, man, because if not. Kiss your ass goodbye, man. You're going to have to pay for your sins. And the wages of sin is what? Death. Okay? But you want your sins what? Blotted out. The only way to do that is repenting and turning back to Yahweh Basha Mashiach. There is no other way. He's the only way out of here. He is the door, man. You know what I'm saying? You go to John 10. There is no other way, man. This is John 10. Barely, barely. I say unto you, he that entereth not. By the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way. The same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. You know what I'm saying? So there is no other door. Yahweh Shai is the door. Okay? You turn back. You got to get under his uh, his wing. But uh, like I said, you want your sins blotted out. This is Acts 3.19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, because, you know, Yahweh Bashem Mishai, he is going to restart the earth one more time. You know, the first time was um the flood. OK, the second time is with uh, fire, the second coming. OK, the lake of fire, all that. So, you know, you better repent and be converted before that, that happens. OK, because. Uh, yeah, how about Shemesh ain't going to be playing, you know, when the house shot returns. He's going to be putting in work, killing a lot of people. This is uh, Hebrews 9 and 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Without shedding of blood is no remission. So that's why Yahweh Shai had to die, man, because, you know, that's how exchange uh, happens in this universe, man. And this is what it is. This is uh, Hebrews 9 and 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves. But by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Okay, so Yahweh Shai did a great service, man. He did a great thing, man. 
This is Revelation 12 and 11. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. You know what I'm saying? That's the elect and the multitude, you know? So like I said, man, you want to um, repent. You want to turn back to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. You know what I'm saying? Because if not, you know, the wages of sin is death and you're going to die. Okay, so you need to turn back to Yahweh by Hashem, Shai, so his blood can cover you. Okay, for the remission of sins so they can be blotted out. Double honors unto the elders and apostles of Jesus who tell me this truth. And call Allah Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rahach Kodash.